Hello, welcome to this video on the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. My name is Nakaya Remmer, helping you through this calculus journey. Let's get started. The name alone is very profound. Let's see why. Um, the two major operations of calculus are integration and differentiation. This is the connecting tissue between the two. It comes in two different parts. The first, uh, the, the, um, it's about being able to uh, start with the function and end up back with that function after doing these two operations. Uh, there's two parts to the fundamental theorem of calculus. Let's start with the second part. Okay, you're gonna start with the continuous function f of x, and you're gonna form the integral of that function. Um, it's gonna be stated as the integral from a to x, and then we have a dummy variable in there, f of t dt. And so you can get back to the original function by following up that integration operation with the differentiation operation. So you start with f of x, you integrate, you get this symbol here, which is the integral from a to x of f of t dt. And then you follow it up with the derivative of that and their inverse operations, the derivative of the integral, back to the original function. Okay, part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is the part that um, ends up being the one you use more often, is the reverse of this process. You're going to start with the function and then instead of integrating it to start out, you're going to take its derivative to start out. And so then from that, you then do the inverse operation, you integrate. And so take its derivative, and then you're going to integrate that. When you integrate a derivative, what you get is the original function back, technically uh, plus or minus a constant, depending on the value of f of a. Okay. All right, let's dive into the fundamental theorem of calculus part one, and then we'll make subsequent videos with many examples, and then we'll also talk about the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2. All right, great. What's, what are you trying to do here? Remember, um, the symbol for the definite integral is um, the integral from a to b, f of x dx. It measures the area under the graph of the function above the x-axis between x equals a and x equals b. Our goal is to be able to do this in a way that's better than we've done in the past. So in previous videos, we have approximated the value by using rectangles, taking the integral from a to b, chopping it up into a finite number of rectangles, and estimating the area. And then we've also done this by the definition of the definite integral, where you do a Riemann sum. And that's very difficult. It's just involved process. It's a very involved process. We need something better. Okay, we want to be able to find this exact area, but in with, you know, with less work, okay, and the connecting, uh, um, the, what helps us to do this is the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1, where it says, if you're asked to find this definite integral, your job should first be able, um, should be to go find the antiderivative of that function, okay, and so it says, as long as your function is continuous on a closed interval from A to B, then this definite integral can be found by going out and finding the antiderivative of that function, that is the integrand, and then evaluating it at the limits of integration. First at the integration upper limit of b, and then subtracting from that the evaluation at the lower limit a. g is the antiderivative of your function f. Okay? All right, great. So we, we experienced antiderivatives. We've, um, we looked at the, the estimation of this particular example here, where we had the integral from 1 to 5 of x squared, trying to find an area under x squared between 1 and 5. We approximated with four rectangles, and then we upped the number of rectangles, and then we actually even did this question by the definition of the definite integral using a Riemann sum. We need something better, and if something better is this fundamental theorem of calculus part one. We need to find the antiderivative. In a previous set of notes, we talked about how to find the antiderivative. It's just looking at the indefinite integral. It's trying to find out what function has x squared as its derivative. You would guess it'd be x cubed by the way the power rule works, but there's no multiplier out front that would, you know, if it was just x cubed, you'd have a three down front. Um, so that three is gone because it's x cubed over three. Technically, there's a plus c there. And according to the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1, we plug a 5 into that, 
and then we get a result. We plug a 1 into that and we subtract that resu um, result from the, the antiderivative evaluated at 5. So you plug a 5 in, you get 125 over 3 plus c. You plug a 1 in, you get 1 over 3 plus c. You don't really need the plus c. In an indefinite integral, you need the plus c. Indefinite integral is the one without the bounds. It's asking for the antiderivative. But in a definite integral, the c's are going to cancel out anyway. And so you don't need them. Don't use them in a definite integral, but use them in an indefinite integral. And so we just get 124 over 3, and we get it in no time flat. The hardest part was trying to figure out what the antiderivative was. And we've spent some time on finding the antiderivative now. And we're just going to look at a bunch of examples here. This is our first one. And much better than approximating it, much better than using the definite integral definition, Riemann sum. This is the way to go. All right, great. Um, once again, the C's will cancel, so don't worry about putting them in. All right, let's look at the second example. Nice little cubic function, x cubed minus 2x plus 3. And I'm interested in the area under the graph of that function between negative 2 and 2. It's a continuous function. We can integrate that. We can find the antiderivative. We can plug in the bounds. We can execute this with the fundamental theorem of calculus, part 1. At the end, I'm going to show you a shortcut. Okay. All right, great. So what's the antiderivative of this polynomial? Well, we learned that we can just take it term by term and do the power rule in reverse. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the same thing, just like in the previous example. So the antiderivative of x to the 3 is x to the 4 over 4. Now, when it comes to a constant, you keep that constant there, and you focus on the x. So the antiderivative of negative 2x, you keep the negative 2, you get x squared over 2 by adding 1 to the new, uh, exponent and dividing by the same thing. Those 2s cancel out, and you just get x squared. Well, minus x squared, because of the sign in between them is a negative. And then um, anytime you have a constant, its antiderivative is that constant times x. Don't worry about the plus c. Our job, plug a 2 into this and then plug a negative 2 into this and subtract the result. So we plug a 2 in, and we get uh, 16 over 4, which is a 4, and then we subtract a 4, those two cancel out, and we get a 6. Okay, so we plug a negative 2 in. The same action is going to happen. Negative 2 to the 4th is going to be 16 over 4, so it's 4. And then negative 2 squared is going to be a 4 as well. We subtract them, they cancel. We get a negative 6. And then, we subtract 6 minus the negative 6, it gives us 12. Okay, here's the actual graph. And um, actually, part of it dips below the x-axis, believe it or not. But it's a net area from negative 2 to 2, the net area. Negative areas below, positive areas above, and the net accumulated area. Okay, now we could have done this in a much easier way. Be on the lookout for when your integral is from minus a to a. Because if your function inside is odd, then you could just not have to worry about integrating that because its integral will be zero. Now, our function is not odd. You can tell by the graph of it, it's not an odd function. It's not an even function either. It has pieces that are odd and even. And so what you can do then is break your integral up. The first two terms are odd. How can you look at a polynomial and know that it's odd? Well, it's about the exponent. If you have odd powers only, you're an odd polynomial. If you have even powers only, and maybe even a constant as well, a constant is an even polynomial. So I'm going to take this and break it into two different integrals. The one piece on the odd and the other piece on the even. And don't worry about the even. There's a, there's a formula for calculating the even, but this is just a straightforward integrating a constant 3. And so that's a straight, you know, don't have to worry about that one. And so um, when you integrate an odd function from minus a to a, the result is 0. The negative area and the positive area cancel out. Okay, so this will be 3, and then we integrate a constant, you just do the subtraction of the, of the bounds, because it's like 3x, and you get 2 minus a minus 2. So 3 times 4, this result is 12, and you get it much quicker, because you, you were looking for the minus a to a. All right, we have many more examples. I don't want to um, make this video too long. So uh, thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe. I'll reach out if you have any questions. And um, find your way to my website, calcoach.com, for more um, practice problems. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.